Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Unboxing and storytelling time today because there's a couple that aren't in boxes and a few other small things. So starting off with our main topic today, I think Fender's watching my videos and listening to some of my comments, <laughs> complaints, criticisms, and praises for what they've done. You guys remember the Asuka Telecaster? We did that a couple of days ago. Well, I guess not days, but months ago might be a more accurate term. That video did really well. I think it's close to a quarter million views. And at that point in time, it was a Japan limited edition guitar. You couldn't get it outside of Japan unless you were like one of the lucky ones that got one of the few that was sent to the European market. Some countries were lucky to get like a uh, 10 to 30 or so. But lo and behold, I was just on YouTube one day and there's kind of a relatively new channel called Casino Guitars, something like that. They just have a nice little talk show. I can see them becoming popular. So you can check them out. But what made me click on that is they had an Oscar tally. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. A USA shop gets an Oscar tally? What's going on here? So apparently Fender decided to release these to the United States in limited production. They didn't do that before. And I forget what the exact number is. He said it in a comment, but there was never like an officially published thing. They made like 80 of these for the USA market. So I happen to pick one of these things up again, just, you know, so I can tell the tale of the USA Oscars, or as I alluded to in the review and demo, the Burger King Telecaster. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, apparently if you were lucky and you knew about these things and you found a dealer quick enough, you could actually buy these. I think it was like 2300 US. But what's kind of unique about these things being released is there was already a market established for these things. They pretty regularly sell in that 35 to about $4,500 range. I mean, some people ask crazy prices for them. But I feel bad, you know, for the people who paid the import duties and costs because once again, it's a Japanese made guitar. You will have to pay that to import it. But they also got it like, what, six months in advance and they didn't have to uh, hunt them down. But as soon as I saw that video, it's like, is there still available? I didn't see it on their website. I went through everything and sure enough, there are a few of these popping up here and there. And I was able to find one shop that still had them in stock at like the actual retail price that it's supposed to be. Because that, that's what you would run into is most dealers, they would say, well, you know, people are paying four grand for these things. We might as well list these for that much too. And honestly, I can't blame them because it's not necessarily, you know, a thing where people buy them up and then resell them at a crazy profit margin because the market was already there because it was a limited edition. And it still is limited edition. And unfortunately, this is one of those things you just had to know about it because at this point in time, unless there's a small shop that doesn't sell online, I don't think you're going to find one of these. I was surprised to see even Sweetwater got one of these. But yeah, this is looks the exact same to me. This one is number 580 and I was able to find it at the Music Villa in Bozeman, Montana. I guess the other thing that the people who imported them have over this is their much earlier serial numbers. Something else that made the Japan exclusive earlier ones even better is unfortunately for the USA release, they fixed it. It no longer says serial number. It now has the correct spelling number. But oh my goodness, look at my serial number. 20020202, that's cool. I don't know why Fender did it, but maybe it was my video. I'm just gonna say it's my video. Make myself feel good. <laughs> Asuka strikes in America. Oh, what's our next story to share today? Let's, let's grab this one. So I think it was last episode, I did a comparison between the Slash Gold Top and the 50 Standard Gold Top. I had a bunch of people ask me, hey, how much is that Slash? How much is the Slash? It's like, I'm sorry, but the Slash, at that point in time, it had already been traded away. I had filmed that particular episode like three weeks in advance or something. But I ended up trading locally that Slash guitar for this. Honestly, I think it was a pretty good deal on my part. This does have some wear, but you're probably gonna have your breath taken away with what I got. Take a look at this thing. It's a Cobra Burst Les Paul Custom. Now, if you're saying, why would somebody trade a custom shop Les Paul Custom for a Slash? 
you gotta remember that thing was pretty much brand new so brand new price even if it's like slightly used we're talking 2750 if he would have thrown this on the market took the time to sell it himself he probably could have got about 3500 bucks on reverb take out your fees and shipping and making sure that the buyer's happy risking a return things like that there wasn't much equity traded away. I mean, I think there was like a, a $400 just a premium, so he didn't have to worry about it. And you gotta remember, this thing does have some light wear and tear. And you know, that's kind of how I make my business. I do the things nobody wants to. <laughs> so this guy, it's, it's a Cobra Burst Custom. We've talked about the original Cobra Burst before, but what makes this so unique is, you know, you get the slightly quilty top, I would call this one. It is a beautiful guitar, but then the back, it's cherry. I don't understand it, but that's just the way it is. But it is also a 2017, so you have to find a buyer that doesn't mind that this has a rich light fretboard. But somebody's also replaced the nut on this one. We've got some uh, dings on the top, like right there. But really all this thing needs is cleaned up. So I thought that was a good trade to make. Yeah, there's kind of a ding right here. And it looks like, yes, we do have the COA and all that other good stuff if you're worried about that. And it is billed as a Les Paul Custom Q. Oh, and the other reason why I wanted to trade it is he didn't like the neck profile. It was too slim for him. He wanted that fatter neck. And he felt that slash and he's like, yes, that's what I want. Next up here, we'll just open these small packages, starting with this large one. At the end of the year, I made a lot of investments into the channel. I got myself a new Mac Pro computer. That helps me uh, edit the videos a little bit more efficiently and get them posted quicker. Other than that, I didn't figure you guys wanted to watch me unbox that. And I got a whole bunch of other stuff, but I think something that is very important here is this guy right here. I picked up a new camera, the Canon EOS R5. I heard it's good. I think they're like 5,000 bucks, so it's quite the investment. I actually got two of them. One of them comes with a kit lens and it's not here yet. Whereas this other one was just the camera body only. Oh wow, that feels kind of cheap to be honest. I've never had a Canon before. I've been using these Lumixes for quite some time now, the GH4s. I mean, that's like almost a, a metal-like feel, whereas this... It'll take some getting used to. I mean, if somebody told me this was a $5,000 camera, I would not believe them. But my thought behind getting the new computer is I can probably do 4K footage now and not have to slow and bog my computer down. So I will have to have some sort of a, a learning curve to see how this thing works. But I won't bore you guys with those details. But now back on over to the guitar world side of things. I think in here, I just found these on Reverb. Whenever I find a, a good deal on a set of pickups, it's like, yeah, why not? I'll list them on Reverb. If somebody wants to buy them, they can buy them. Otherwise, now I'm not opposed to having pickups laying around. I don't do too many projects and restorations anymore. That's just kind of a, a bad habit of mine. So what we've got going on here are Dirty Fingers pickups. These things are hard to find because Gibson never has them in stock in their store. So I usually have pretty good luck selling these for about 300 bucks a set. So you can check them out on Reverb if you're interested in those. And the next thing I found in my travels, another one of these guys. So this is one of those, I think, what is it, 1977 manuals? Actually, I think it's 1978 if I remember correctly because the Paul is in this, but VSG is not. So we've actually looked at one of these on the channel before, but what I kind of liked about this one is it was actually used at a shop for people to actually want to buy the guitars. Like you can see there's marks where people have been looking at it. Somebody wanted a Les Paul Standard. Yep, I want one of those. Want a Les Paul Custom? Definitely gonna get me a the Paul. No, no Les Paul 5578 garbage guitar. No double cutaways. <laughs> oh man, he didn't want the L5S. I'm surprised this guy didn't tell me they, they scratched out the pictures. I was just, you know, thinking there'd be some writing. But anyways, yeah, this guy did not want half the lineup apparently. Some of the pages are nice. It'll be good for somebody's coffee table if they would like to purchase it. Oh, that's nice. They even wrote down the prices. So 1050 on the ES350T. We just did a 350T yesterday. Loved that guitar. Was not expecting to. 
We've got just one more story to share today, and that would be this. We've actually already unboxed and reviewed this. I had somebody give me a, a new Guitar Day purchase order on one of these. So I got two more of these things in, and this was the first one I unboxed, you know, off a of camera. And unfortunately, th there was just a little bit of a flaw that I didn't want to send this one to him. I wanted to give him the one that was in the cleanest shape possible. And it's another one of the Captain Kirk Douglas SGs. Now, I really like the green one. That's the one that I like the best. The black one is really cool. It's got the gold hardware, but you know, you can get a black SG somewhere else. Getting one of these guys, yeah, not necessarily as common. But what was wrong with this one is when they put the nut in, and I'm sure it came after that, you can see like the finish check line just kind of stems slightly past that. So I think that's the nut actually within the finish right there on this particular one. And then on this side, the finish just cracked very slightly. So I thought I would just offer this one on reverb. That way I can, you know, disclose that up front. And uh, no, I'm not gonna give you 30% off just because there's a tiny little finish check by the nut. I just really like these SGs. I'm a firm believer that these are fantastic. I still have people complaining and telling me you can too get just the middle so you know what Let, let's just prove it because <laughs> i don't think people will stop the yelling at me about that till i do okay so powering on my deluxe reverb amp here so just our neck pickup <laughs> just our bridge then the middle is these two So what people are thinking that you can do, you can just roll both of those off and then this will just come on because you can blend it in. So yes, very cool guitar. It'll be on my reverb shop because yeah, what we talked about, some lines on the nut. Okay, let's go ahead and switch over to a very busy day of boxing stuff up. We will start it all off with this one. This is a 50s gold tie. I bought this one for the comparison piece for that other slash. But these new gold tops, they are beautiful. I mean, if you think this is a dark gold finish, I mean, take a look at that other video that we just did, the last one. The slash gold tops are even darker. So we need to get this packed up and off to its new home because the owner is anxiously awaiting. Next up, we haven't seen this guitar in a while. This is a consignment piece, probably actually one of the longest consignment pieces that it took to sell, but it's because the condition, you know, it's pretty worn here. It's that ovation. I think they call it a Thunderbird or something. Unfortunately, just didn't quite have enough time in order to do the full review and demo. It's, it's an interesting guitar, maybe not my favorite, but it was definitely beautiful. And I think that's why this guy probably bought it. I mean, awesome flame figuring, back, sides, spruce top another haul from the last episode we've got a gaggle of tenor tellies here now despite having to pack these all up together they did not sell as a complete set the red one and the blue one are both going to the same guy but the butterscotch telly went to someone else it was funny because i had listed these i think about an hour or two after that video right and I went to bed and then I woke up and all three of them had sold like at exactly the same time. Like we're talking minutes from each other. So I, I think the uh, butterscotch telly guy, he got lucky or else this other person was probably going to buy the other butterscotch. As of right now, I only have one more red one coming. Now this is one we have not seen in quite some time. It's a Jimi Hendrix 
Flying V. I came close to selling the SG as well. There's a few people interested, so maybe you'll see it packed up later, but as of the time of recording all these, no, it hasn't been completely spoken for yet. But this is actually going to a collector. He's got to be my number one private help session guy. I think he books like five or six sessions a week. He's always buying really nice stuff for his collection and wants to make sure that he's paying fair market value and not overpaying for stuff. And he had asked me to uh, touch up that ugly chip on the back side right there, even though it was likely factory like that, just the, from the whole aging job. I agree with him, it did look kind of ugly. <laughs> Our last one for today sleeps inside here. It's the Glary, the Glary base. Now I threw this one up on reverb. Whenever I get a case with the Glary, I tend to sell them, but if I don't get the case, I just throw them in my uh, sponsored items pile, honestly. Glary's new upgraded series is pretty cool. I like what they've done, but I think they can still do a little bit more. They asked me, hey, what else can we do to make this up to your standards? And I told them, maybe also look into better fret wire. Not that the fret wire they have is bad, it's just it doesn't look the best. And I told them about the whole neck situation. And I told them, do it for guitars next, because I think that's going to be their main demographic there. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning into this boxing unboxing episode. I hope you enjoyed seeing all these guitars. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.